I bet you it probably is close to half of my sales during that time were from new stackers. They've actually sent me a picture of two big pallets of thousand ounce bars. He said, there's not a silver shortage right now. There's just a delay in getting the finished product out. I think a lot of my clientele and a lot of most coin shops clientele feel the same way because that's why they're buying. There's no other way to explain it. We have a fantastic video for you today and I hope you stick with us because we were joined once again by Josh from Minot Coin and Bullion. Today, we talked about cryptos, how it's affecting gold and silver prices, how silver and gold have been selling in his store. We talked about the silver surplus, what could cause a real silver shortage and so many more things. Now this is a long one, over 30 minutes, but you don't have to stare at the screen, just minimize it and listen to it like a podcast because you should want to hear this entire interview with Josh. So let's get into it, but before we do, don't forget to like and help YouTube recommend this video to others and don't forget to subscribe. My channel is sponsored by sdbullion.com. New customers can get their first order of gold or silver at spot by going to sdbullion.com forward slash new. Hey everybody, welcome back. We are joined once again by my friend Josh from Minot Coin and Bullion. Josh, how has it been these last couple of weeks? Things have been great. Things are steady and busy in the shop and have no complaints. That's awesome. You say it's been busy. I know the last time we talked, you were buying a lot of gold and not selling a lot. I know we just talked before this and you said that it's changed. So do you want to give us a little bit of insight as to what's going on there? Sure. Uh, quite honestly, the, the switch has flipped uh, basically since that video aired about gold and I talked about how gold has been moving slowly and I'd been buying, you know, probably to the degree of 10 times more across the counter than I was selling. Uh, that's flipped the opposite now. It, uh, I don't know if it's the video or what, but it's, uh, it spurred gold sales. I'm actually gold depleted right now and I'm waiting on gold uh, to arrive to fill orders that I've already sold. So it's a, it did a complete 180. Uh, gold demand has, has peaked again in a sense. Um, which it's very unpredictable. You know, the price didn't dip. The price is actually up a bit and I'm selling more gold. Yeah. So and I go figure. And I would imagine that geographic location. So for example, I went to that coin show, uh, you know, right after we had had our video, uh, last video talking about gold, not selling. And, you know, we had a lot of dealers saying that they weren't having much of a problem selling it. I mean, obviously there were dealers saying, you know, that they were selling it slow as well, but other ones saying that it was selling quite well for them. So how much of a part do you think that plays into it? Oh, I think it plays a pretty big part. I mean, I you can't compare shop A and shop B in two different parts of the country and expect the same product mix at the same time, I guess. Um, only in a, in a special circumstances, I guess I would argue during, a, you know, the busiest time for us ever was March of earlier this year. Um, I've talked with other shop owners. Uh, that was when the bank failures started. Uh, gold and silver both started jumping up. And that really got into the news cycle and spiked a frenzy, spiked uh, FOMO, and people started buying. I'm guessing in that type of situation, there were shops all over the place that were seeing record numbers. Um, but that was a special circumstance. But I think, you know, on just typical average business days, I'm guessing in different parts of the country, it's always going to be different. And, and, and you've proven that really with your videos. Yeah, of course. And that's why I call around, like whenever I do those coin shop call videos, and if you guys haven't seen those, uh, there's a big playlist of them, check them out. But whenever I do those videos, I don't just call one state, I'm calling all over the country. You know, I'll do East Coast, Central America, you know, West Coast, you know, up and down the country, because I'm trying to get like a rough idea of what's going on across the United States, not just in one little location. Um, let me ask you this though, like getting out of that and going into silver. I mean, we've seen, you know, a couple of big news articles come out recently. Moody's downgrading their outlook for the U.S. Uh, for the U.S.'s uh, credit rating from what was it stable to negative? Uh, that has come mm -hmm. out, and we've seen the markets go up as of right now. Silver sitting at twenty three something at the time that they released that it was in the twenty twos, but. Do you really think that they had an effect on it? Because even without reports like that, we see silver move up and down all the time. You know, it's really hard to pinpoint. You know, there's always a stock answer on, you know, why silver went up or why silver went down. Oh, well, you know, they decided they're going to raise the interest rates a quarter point or, oh, they downgraded the credit rating. Or there's always a on the surface reason um, that, you know, the quote unquote experts pin to why it's happening. But I don't always think that's necessarily the reason why. As you've said many times, there's typical ebbs and flows to the market. Um, of course, things in the news cycle can have impact, but I don't necessarily think that's the only thing driving it. Right. Now, the reason the reason that mainly I brought that up, though, um, 
So let's just talk about, so what we've had over this last few weeks, there was big news. Like I think it's covered on every channel except for mine. Uh, this is the first time I'm going to be even talking about it. By the way, I did read every word of that report, and this was from Silver Institute. Uh, and I believe, uh, I forget which research firm put the report together. Uh, but there's, you know, they were talking about demand and saying that the industrial and not just industrial, but, you know, demand for silver overall is going to increase like 48, 50 percent over the next 10 years. Then we come out with then we come out with the report that I just talked about with the downgrade of the outlook for the U.S. credit and so on and so forth. And all of these things that are happening and then the wars overseas and, uh, you know, just the in general, the inflation that everyone's dealt with. And I know the U.S. is showing that inflation is cooling, but I think you and I know that for the most part, that's not really the case, at least yet. I mean, why with all of this happening, with all of these things coming out, why does silver not react like a lot of people expect that it would? Because a lot of people would expect with everything that I just said and so much more that I didn't even say that silver should be reacting. And a dollar, you know, going up a dollar is, is nothing. I mean, what do you think is going on there? Yeah, well, I think the general consensus for, you know, I would guess a majority of your viewers and a majority of my customers would feel the same way, that every indicator is there that silver should be priced a lot higher than it is, but it isn't. Um, you know, frankly, I believe it just boils down to the the big bank manipulation. Um, it's nothing that, you know, the, the little guy like us can do. Um, I actually had a discussion on uh, one of your videos, <laughs> Silver Seeker, in the comment thread uh, uh, with an individual who uh, argued that me as a local coin shop owner manipulate the spot price. And I explained to him as a local coin shop, I have absolutely zero impact on spot price. He didn't feel that way. He thought because I purchase it at spot price and sell it based on spot price, um, purchase that I buy and sell based on spot price, that I'm a manipulator of the silver market. Clearly, he's out of touch. But um, yeah, the the general public doesn't control it. It's the big banks with longs and shorts. Um, it, it's just it's very frustrating. They don't want. I, this is an opinion now. They don't want gold or silver to value in the open market. They want to keep the price down because it benefits them financially. Uh, when it comes time to fulfill contracts of ounces, these paper contracts that they way oversell based on number of ounces that are in existence, and we could do a whole video on that probably. Um, but it, it's it's not illegal, although there are some rules that have been broken, and you know we can go back to Jamie Diamond, you know, if everybody doesn't know who he is, uh, do some research. He's a he's a silver manipulator that got in some trouble. Um, that's what they do. They do that to line their own pockets and benefit their own companies um, by manipulating the price. While us on the sidelines, you know, all we can do, you know, we can get super excited that silver goes up a dollar, but really it should be double. I believe. I think. I think there's no reason silver shouldn't be around forty to fifty dollars an ounce right now, based on everything that you just said, everything going on in the world, not just, you know, globally, but nationally, there's no good reason other than it's manipulated and kept low. There's no other way to explain it. So let's get into supply. So we, I've had a couple of comments on the last video that I did actually talking about is silver manipulated that said there's just way too, they don't believe it's manipulated at all. And it just shows that there's way too much silver out there. So let's let's kind of dive into that. I mean, let's talk about just silver from an investment standpoint or stacking or whatever you want to call it. Some people don't like to use the word investment, but right now it, it seems clear. And I did this video with, uh, you know, with uh, Vermilion down in Florida. It seems clear that there's plenty of silver out there for anyone that's wanting to invest. But how many people really stack silver, especially in the U.S.? I mean, would you guess less than one percent? Uh, yeah, I yeah. think so. I do too. So, and, and keep in mind, these numbers are pure guesses. We could be wrong, but let's just say it is 1%. Could we really see an actual, and I'm not talking about overall, but could we really see like four, five, six percent, even ten, if 10% if of Americans, like, let, and I'm talking about, you know, adult age, you know, have an income, start stacking silver, there wouldn't be enough uh, in that instance, would there? No. 
<laughs> not even yeah. close. Yeah, not even close. And that's where the premiums come in because, you know, once that's what happened back in March. Everyone, March, April, May, everyone was out buying silver. Everyone wanted the silver. And, you know, I argued, and this is true, and I still hold by this, that it wasn't really a shortage so much as it was a supply issue. They just couldn't produce it and get it out fast enough for the current demand. But if, if even, I, I would imagine even during that time that it was less than 2% of people that were even interested in silver at all. I mean, what are your thoughts mm -hmm. on that? Yeah, I would agree. You know, I can just plug in or, you know, extrapolate based on my sales numbers during that uptick in demand you're talking about. You know, I saw... Um, my sales were more than double of a normal month in March of 2023, which ended up, you know, I almost had a, well, I had a record sales month. I, I sold almost as much as I do in a, a normal year close to. Um, so based on that, if we believe 1% of the population is buying silver, now granted current stackers were coming in and buying more, but I had a huge, huge group of new customers coming in and buying for the first time during that time period. And frankly, I do every month. So I do believe that number is growing. And I believe it's growing at a faster rate than it has in a long time, just because of what's going on. So, you know, based on that, you know, I, I completely agree with uh, what Brian said on that video. And if those listening haven't seen that one, it was a very good one. You should go watch it. I'll put a link um, below. There's definitely not a shortage of physical silver where we get into difficult times are like we had back in March and you just touched on this where demand exceeds the availability of getting supply out. So like talking with uh, Dave from coin Huskers, my wholesaler, um, he had mentioned, you know, this was, I, we did a video, you and I was uh, three weeks, four weeks ago. And I talked about how we're starting to see some product delays and premiums are going up. Um, I thought that was kind of the start of, you know, our next, you know, shortage per se, not really a shortage, but a, a, uh, a delay. Um, that's what's happening now. It's not that there's not enough silver. There's not enough silver for our industry refined into bars and rounds that the refiners can give the whole or sell the wholesalers that can sell the retailers that I can sell my customers. So there's probably pallets of thousand ounce Comex bars sitting just waiting to go through the, the process to turn them into, you know, the silver the customers are used to purchasing. Dave actually sent me a picture of two big pallets of, of thousand ounce bars. He said, there's not a silver shortage right now. There's just a delay in getting the finished product out to the, to the wholesaler so we can get them out to the consumer. So I agree hundred percent with Brian <clears throat> in terms of available silver for our industry. Because like you said, maybe less than 1% of the nation's buying it. There's not a shortage. It's just sometimes we get into the, the situation where demand outpaces the ability to provide supply. And that's where we're sitting now because honestly, there's products that are on delay right now. Yeah. One week, two weeks. So it's not because there's a shortage though. It's just because they can't keep up. They have the silver. They just haven't turned it into the bars and rounds that we want to buy. Exactly. If that makes sense. Exactly. So, so that's with, you know, 1%. And so what do you think, what do you think going back to March, April or so when you had all these new customers in, when you had that best month ever, uh, that month that was a year, basically, what do you think the percentage of new customers versus just returning customers stacking more silver during that time? What do you think that number looked like? Oh, that's a good question. I, I can tell you, I saw an incredible amount of new faces every day. Every day, new people were coming in. I mean, people that I maybe knew from my community, but I knew they had never purchased from me before um, and get similar stories, you know, yeah, I'm concerned about this and that, and I want to put some cash into metal. And <clears throat> so I was there to help those individuals at least a quarter, at least 25%. I'd say it maybe even could have pushed 50% of my customer base. Now I'm not talking number of people. I'm talking dollars that were sold. I'm assuming that's what you're after more so. I bet you it probably is close to half of my sales during that time were from new stackers. Okay. And so many of them have been back and are buying more. That's good. I'm glad to hear that they're still stacking. What about number of people though? 
number of people. <clears throat> I mean, you want a raw number? Or you want right. a no, no, just raw, of, of new. Just... Yeah, of new. How many like new? Yeah, well, yeah. the thing is, a lot of the new customers were buying in large amounts. So gotcha. you know, maybe a quarter of my customers okay were new. Okay, um, but they accounted for probably fifty percent of the sales that month. If that makes sense? Yeah, no, that does make sense because they're you know they're coming in, they're wanting to buy a lot of silver based on everything going on. I get it. Uh, hopefully, mm -hmm. hopefully, you said a lot of them were still returning and buying silver, so that's a good thing. Hopefully, they weren't, you know like fear mongered into it and they just, you know, they realized well, that they should I, have some of them were, yeah. some of them definitely were. And, you know, I was here to be the reasonable voice, but they came in with, you know, their mindset on what they wanted to do and what they wanted to spend. So I was here to provide that to them. And, you know, looking back, you know, in March, the price was higher. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, maybe it wasn't the, the best time to buy, but at least they have some metal now. And, uh, you know, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, do you think do you think that there's like even a chance that we're going to see silver actually react the way that it is, or is it just going to keep being held down? At some point, yeah, I absolutely believe that. Um, not just I'm not just saying that because I sell it, and I've said this before. I'm a stacker first and a, a businessman second. So um, I definitely believe in silver 100 percent that it's it's going to have it's day in yeah. the limelight, I guess. The The issue is who knows when. Um, you know, we've, we've talked about so many reasons why or so many reasons why it should be higher in terms of spot price, but it isn't. Um, I, like I said, I think a lot of it harkens back to manipulation, which I don't talk about on my own channel much either because um, there are other factors that at play too, but um, it, it's got, it has to go up. I mean, it truly does. Um, just don't know when, don't know to what degree, and nobody does. Yeah. Um, but that that's where I'm, I don't know, I guess that's where I'm confident in placing my own bets. And of course, that's an opinion, but I think a lot of my clientele and a lot of most coin shops clientele feel the same way because that's why they're buying it. Fair enough. So let me ask you this. Uh, we're going to go back a little bit in this interview here. Um, and I want to ask you about the guy who you had the conversation with that felt that you as a local coin shop influenced the price. Did he, did he say why he felt that was the case? Like what was his reasoning? No, Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, I had, I just made the comment on, on your video, uh, the last one you did in regards to uh, manipulation, um, that, uh, yes, I'm still stacking. Yes, I absolutely believe that the silver price is manipulated, but that isn't stopping me from continuing to stack. And I commented under my, my own channel, my Mina Coin and Bullion channel, and uh, uh, a viewer responded to that and uh, accused me. He said, uh, how is it manipulated? Aren't you manipulating it by selling it based on, I forget how he worded it, but it honestly, it made no sense. So we kind of had a back and forth, but he didn't give any reason um, he hasn't retorted yet, I guess. Maybe he has now that we're talking, but as of last night, he hadn't responded. But his argument was because I buy silver based on the manipulated spot price and resell it based on the manipulated spot price, that I was guilty of silver manipulation. Mm. And I tried to explain to him that coin shops have no impact on the spot paper price, absolutely zero. We can have an impact on landed cost for the consumer based on the premiums we charge. And of course, that is based on the manipulated silver price. But based on his reasoning, anybody who buys and sells silver is guilty of manipulation because they're buying and selling it based on that manipulated price, right? Right. So, <laughs> so, so what, does he, does, what does he want you to do? And I'm just curious, does he want you to sell it at what you believe silver should be priced at? Because, I mean, I'm sure if he wants to pay you $45 an ounce, You'll be like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought of that exactly too, and I almost responded with that. But I'm I'm not I, here to get into arguments but, uh, on on YouTube. But I thought I would just point out that, you know, his reasoning, yeah, doesn't make a lot of sense. So, well, the reason I don't I, know. the Maybe reason they were I, just looking to stir the pot. Yeah, the reason I wanted to go back to that comment though is because it was like as you were talking, it was kind of eating away at my brain there. I'm like. Why would he say that? And why would he think that way? I would argue that even like the big bullion dealers have very little. I'm not saying none whatsoever, 
but I would argue that they have very little influence over spot prices. I mean, I think I think there's a lot bigger play, things at play, like you know, big banks like J.P. Morgan, government, so on and so forth, that have a lot more to do yep. with it than they do. Yeah, I 100% agree. But you know, like I said, he was maybe just uh, yeah. trying to get a rise out of me. And That's some possible. people live for online arguments with strangers. So <laughs> you know, I maybe, maybe he's one of those people. You know, I, I, I've dealt with many of them and the, I, you know, I, every once in a while, one of them will say something where I'm just like, all right, really? And I'll just respond with, you know, obviousness and, but, but for the most part, that's just a quick, just goodbye. I just don't care. It's just, I, I think <laughs> at some I think, point it's not worth your time. It's not, it's not, it's really not worth the time. It's not worth, you know, the headache, if you will, of, you know, them continuing on and trolling. I had, I had one conversation with a guy and I didn't get into specifics. But I mean, every single thing that I said, like he just, he not only twisted what I said, but he like flat out just added additional bad misinformation to continue to try and support his point. It's like, rather than conceding that, you know, he was incorrect. He's just like, all right, I'm just going to come up with some stuff to make it sound like I was right anyway. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I don't, and, and keep in mind, like I, and I know you as well, uh, I'm not going to speak for you, but I'm sure that you feel the same way as well. I am certainly not a know-it-all. I mean, I ask questions like anybody else and I'm just learning and I, I learn new stuff every single day. I don't get in front of this camera and try and pretend to be the end-all be-all expert. Uh, you know what I mean? But, the, yep. but sometimes, I mean, sometimes people are just like, just so wrong. It's not even funny. <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah. Well, I, I learn every day as well. I, I do. So. You know, it's, it's an industry where you really can't know it all. Right. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's, there's interesting things to learn every day based on, you know, your own research and your own experience for sure. So I guess, I guess, uh, getting back on the topic there, we were talking about, you know, the, the amount of people stacking, I wonder what a world would be like. I mean, we can just sit here and kind of think about it where 5% or even 10% of the U S again, these are grown adults that have an income are stacking silver. I mean, the right now we talked about how it's not really a shortage. It's just a, it's just an issue of, you know, delivering it, getting it there. It's a, basically it's a distribution issue, as I've said, but do you mm -hmm. think it would be an actual shortage? And I, I th please, this is all speculation guys. We're not trying to say this is going to happen, but do you think there could be an actual shortage if we had, you know, 10% of people stacking silver? Quite possibly. Yeah, not just a distribution be... issue, not just a distribution issue, but an actual shortage of silver for yeah. investment to where nobody has it. There's no Comex bars, you know, all the big online retailers, Atmex, SD Bullion, all of them are out. Just coin shops are out. I mean, do you think that could be a thing? Absolutely. And I'll go back to what you started uh, with at the beginning of the interview with the silver institute report which you know that's obviously their their best guess on global demand but they're expecting that global demand for silver is going to go up close to 50 percent in the next decade uh, there's so many uses for it um, a lot of it is electronics and electrical parts did you see i don't mean to interrupt that did you see how much they said silverware would increase that didn't make any yes. sense to me <laughs> I, I did. Uh, apparently, there's a lot of countries that actually produce, you know, we call it silverware, but it, it's really not because it's more flatware. It's not made of silver, but right. there are a lot of countries that produce silverware uh, and the amount for silver jewelry as well. Uh, China and India really are the two big players there, and, and the demand is going to go up quite a bit in their estimation for silver. So that coupled with, you know, let's just say we have 1% of our population in the United States like you said, adults with an income that invest in metal, if that goes to 10%, that's a tenfold increase. That's a huge, huge increase. Um, if these reports end up being true, you know, depending on current mining rates, and for those of you who don't know, silver is typically a, a mining byproduct of other mines, mm -hmm. of gold mines, copper, lead, zinc. Um, granted, there are silver mines, but a lot of times the silver comes out of the ground as a byproduct of others. You know, who knows? I mean, unless they find a big silver hoard somewhere we don't know about, we could see a shortage. And I'm not trying to scare people, but, you know, if demand to hold the physical metal increases by that much, and really when you think about it, 10% of the population, and that's adult population with an income, really isn't that much. But that's a tenfold increase to where we think it is. 
excuse me, where we think it is now. Yeah. So I think if that does happen, there absolutely could be a physical shortage, which, yeah. you know, based on everything we know, would have to drive up the spot price. Yeah. So in that case, uh, and most most definitely premium price, I should say. Yeah, well, premiums, but I, I would say even in that case, that actually would have an effect on spot price at that point. Cause, yeah, I think so too. Yeah, because you're going to have the paper silver investors taking advantage of all that demand as well, for sure. So I don't know. It's it's interesting to think about. I don't think we'll ever get there. Maybe not. Maybe not in my lifetime, at least. I don't know. I, I think I think there's so many people. Let me ask you this, and this is a little off course, but you know, let's go back to 2012, 2013, when people really started getting interested in crypto and Bitcoin. Do you think that the amount of people that are interested in cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin is suppressing, you know, interest in gold and silver? There's, in other words, there's people that are investing in those items instead of physical precious metals. I'm glad that you brought that up, but yes, 100%. That has an impact on interest and demand for metals right um, i have many many customers that like to come in and talk about crypto um, i myself own a little i wish i would have bought it a decade ago <laughs> and i didn't but um those are those are the kind of people that you know 10 ish years ago they had their money in metal um, now it's split right. and for some they're all in on crypto and have gotten rid of their metal so, you know, as long as crypto's around and, you know, I say that, you know, and some people are probably laughing, it may not be around forever. So don't think it's here to stay and it'll always be here. I mean, um, as long as it's around, it's going to have an impact. It's going to take away, I guess, some of the demand for physical gold and silver because, you know, it's it's the it's the new modern sexy investment, for lack of a better word. Yeah. And uh, there there's been huge. I mean, it's 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 proven that there's been huge opportunities to make a lot of money if you can buy the right thing and time it correctly. Where gold and silver over that same time period have been pretty stagnant. So I don't blame the people who have put money into those type of investments. Um, you know, looking to get rich quick because you're not going to typically do that with gold or silver. Um, but I myself am a big believer in the physical yeah. and having the physical, tangible asset and crypto is not. So, so <laughs> yeah. So I was going to say, like, so, so just so you know, my stance on crypto, like I actually, you know, I, I read the white paper for Bitcoin, I want to say back in 2012, like I've known about it for a long time. And I wasn't a fan of it then. And I'm not a fan of it now. And I, I do own I do own a little bit of Bitcoin, I keep it on a ledger. And I, my intent is to never buy it or sell it or buy any more or sell what I have. But any fool, like, I don't care how much you're against crypto, you can hate it. But anybody who comes up and tells me that they wouldn't have bought it back in 2010 is just flat out lying. Because, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, it doesn't matter how much you dislike it. It doesn't matter how much you don't believe in it. I don't believe I don't believe in crypto barely at all. I keep some just in case I'm wrong, because as I said earlier, I'm not an expert on everything. I've, I've been wrong a thousand times in my life and I'm going to continue to be wrong on things. But um, but just because I don't believe in it doesn't mean I don't wish that I would have bought some back when I read all that stuff. Um, yeah, absolutely. You know? So I remember, I remember it's, it's funny. I'll tell you a story. And I think maybe I've shared this on the channel once. Maybe it was on a live stream, which means most people that watch my channel would not have heard this. But back the first time Bitcoin hit $1,000, I remember I was sitting there and my mom was around me and I was telling her about it. I'm like, mom, look at this, this, this internet coin thing i was trying to explain to her how it worked you know how moms are i was trying to explain to her how it worked what it is i said this thing is worth a thousand dollars each right now and she looks me square in the face and she says why don't we buy some then and you know what i told her i said no nah, it's already had its run <laughs> so if i would have listened to my mom's you know what i'm saying <laughs> mama knows best <laughs> yeah to this day she holds it over my head by the way i'm just letting you know <laughs> So. That's funny. I, I could tell a similar story. Um, early on in my coin and bullion business career, I started in 2014. Um, I would have customers talk to me about crypto. And um, I think at the time, I might be wrong with these numbers, but I'm pretty sure it was under $500 per Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. um, and I have a customer who, who buys metal from me who is extremely passionate about crypto, still is to this day. Uh, but he at that time was trying to convince me to invest and you know he, he gave a good speech honestly and almost convinced me to but at the end of the day I, I told him i said you know 
I, I just can't get on board with that. I'm a bigger believer in physical because I believe if you can't touch it, you don't own it. So I think I'll pass. But And this was in a time where it wasn't real easy. I, I had no idea how to even purchase crypto, but he was going to help me. I mountain. mean, this was before we had apps. You probably know, you download it on your phone and it made so so simple. I was going to say probably um, Mount Gox back then would be where if he would have kept yeah. it there, it would have been a problem. But anyway. <laughs> well, um, but. So, but yeah, so I, I mean, he, he was trying to convince me to, to buy some Bitcoin at 500. Yeah. <laughs> and I, and I, and I, you know, you, yours was at a thousand. Mine was at 500 ish, if I remember right. And I just thought, no, I just can't, I don't, I don't understand it enough. I, I'll, you know, I'd rather put the money into gold and silver. Well, yeah. Look who's laughing now. I mean, he, he obviously made better decisions in that front, but yeah, you know, I mean, to be clear, I knew about, I knew about Bitcoin well before a thousand. It was that when it hit a thousand that I was like, wow, really? Right. And that's when I told my mom about it. But you know, it it's, it is what it is. The thing, the thing I don't like about crypto, and I've said a thousand times, probably, you know, be, uh, over the years on my channel, I mean, it, that's probably an exaggeration, but I've said many times over the years on the channel that I don't discount its ability to make money. But the issue that I have with crypto, especially when it comes from a fundamental stacking standpoint, is that it just, it to me, it's like a fiat currency. I mean, it doesn't, mm -hmm. it doesn't have anything backing it. It's, its value is in what people believe that it's valued at. When people stop believing that it has that value, what happens? You know, and, yeah. and the same can be said for gold or silver. Don't get me wrong. I totally get that. But at least with gold and silver, you actually have it. And especially with silver, you have something that's going to be needed for industry regardless. And gold, for that matter, is still used in industry, just nowhere near to the tune that silver is. So mm -hmm. there's, there's a use uh, for gold and silver outside of just being, you know, investment outside of just being a precious metal. I mean, silver can easily be argued that it's not just a precious metal, but an industrial metal as well. Bitcoin can't say yep. anything of that. The only thing Bitcoin and other cryptos do is drain energy off of our grid because it, you know, it takes a lot of energy to make transactions, especially the number of them that go out, you know, every single day. So mm -hmm. it, it's more like it, once, once, once silver's in your hand, that's it. Like, you know, it's already been mined. It's already been refined. It's, you know what I mean? That's it. It's not yep. draining anything else. So I don't know. That and the fact that you have to have access to electricity and the internet. And my background, by the way, the reason I even know about this, my background is in IT. I don't know if I've ever told you that, but people on the channel. No. Uh, yeah. People on my channel that have been watching me for a long time probably know. I was a network engineer. Uh, I don't, I'm not anymore, but that's what I was for some time. And, you know, so obviously I was, I, you know, kept my ear to the wall for things like, you know, and I don't know, I just, maybe, maybe if I'm, I'm just, I always think to myself because I was really in to things like that. Maybe if I were never a silver stacker, I'd be a millionaire today because the primary reason I'd never gotten to crypto is because like you, I believe in gold and silver, but maybe if I never believed in gold and silver, I would have been like, oh yeah, this is great. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe gold and silver is the worst mistake I've ever made. I did. I'm not, I don't believe that by the way, but you know, <laughs> so, right. Um, Anyway, uh, that's probably, we could probably go to there. We've been talking for a half hour here. So this is to be a longer Real video quick. today. I hope that I hope that everyone watches the whole thing. Hey, if you guys are still watching at this point, put a comment down below and say, hey, I'm still watching. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, so Josh, as always, um, you know, I sometimes want to, uh, I sometimes forget to ask something. Is there something you wanted to share with people that maybe I didn't bring up today uh, for the for the channel, for the viewers? No, nothing in particular. I just appreciate you having me on and, you know, letting me give my two cents on the issues at hand. And I definitely appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. I'm always, always glad to have you. And by the way, guys, I've said this before, and there'll be a little plug at the beginning as well. And there'll be a link down below. But Josh uh, is the owner of Minot Coin and Bullion and Minot, North Dakota. Great guy, great dealer. And he has his own YouTube channel, which we will link down below. You guys should go over there and subscribe. Great channel and you should watch. Uh, Josh, thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. Of course. Thanks again. All right. We'll see you next time. So like I told you at the beginning of this video, it was a great one and I hope that you enjoyed it and stuck around for the entire thing. If you did, leave a comment down below and let me know. Additionally, I'm going to put a video up here. If you haven't seen that video yet, make sure you go and watch it right now because it's a great one. And other than that, just thank you so much for being here, so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.